track development. I've been doing that since 2005. I've been doing mobile development since uh, 2009. Did iOS, got into Android shortly after that. Kind of went back and forth between the two. And uh, for the past year and a half or so, I've been doing strictly Android. And so recently, uh, about a month and a half ago, Dan was nice enough to extend an invite to Google Glass uh, to me to give it a, a try. And so I've got it now and uh, just thought it was the neatest thing and wanted to play with it and learn more about how to develop for it. So I've got some good news and bad news for you guys. So the bad news is the original talk was supposed to be about developing for the GDK, for the Glass Developer Kit. So the bad news is I started doing that, and I actually have demo a, a demo app, and I can I can speak to how to develop for it to some extent. Um, but as I was doing it, I said, hmm, there's a lot of information in here. There's a lot of background. If someone hasn't used Glass before, there's a lot of background required to understand some of the terms we're going to talk about here. So I said, why don't we make up a few little slides to try to describe, you know, what the Glass user interface looks like, so people will have some frame of reference to understand what this code is talking about. So I started doing it, and I had you know, three slides, four slides, five, 10, 20. I ended up with 50 slides. And I looked at that and I said, boy, this is going to end up being a really, really long presentation. So maybe it would be good to split these into two talks uh, instead of trying to have it for two hours where everybody's in a food coma well, after they've eaten and just sort of pass out. Uh, so this talk, so the good news is we still have a talk. I'm going to be talking about the um, about Google Glass's user interface primarily uh, in this talk. And after this is done, I'm happy to sit with people. We can bring put stuff up on the screen. I can show you uh, a sample app I just called Hello Glass that I've got on here. I've got the code for it. I can show you how to make a basic app. I'm going to try to cover that in a second presentation. I don't know if it'll be in January or February, but there will be a follow up to this to actually talk about how to do um, how to do GDK development. Uh, so, uh, but I'm happy beforehand since people came that was the title of the talk and then some people came to learn more about that, I'm happy to talk about that here as well after this uh, presentation. But I also figured this would be a great way to uh, sort of introduce people who haven't played with it. Because, you know, I, the, like these guys over here who approached me, you know, they say, oh, what's this class? And they try it on and they see it. But a lot of people have heard about it but don't really know what it looks like and, and how you interact with it. So I figured that it would be, it would be useful to have that uh, in a presentation here to give people an idea of you know, what exactly is going on with these people with these funky things on their heads. And I see the little screen on, but I can't see what's going on. So that's what we're going to talk about. So I already gave my introduction, told you a little bit about me. I've been, well, I've been developing software now for 15 years. Uh, and like I said, iOS developer from 2009 to 2012. And I've been doing Android the whole time through. So, um, so what is Google Glass? And basically, you know, when people ask me, you know, what, what's this glass thing? I just tell them, it's a wearable computer. And I think it's important to call it that because we're coming into this new category of devices called wearables. So you have glass, you have smart watches, um, you have things like Fitbits, just different kinds of wearable device, computing devices that, you know, take measurements. So, uh, some you interact with more than others, but they're, it's a category called wearables. And so I just told them it's a wearable computer. It's, it's an Android device. It runs Android 4.0.4, which is ice cream sandwich, um, or for developers uh, called API level 15. But it's a little bit older. Uh, in terms now, I think, I don't remember when ice cream sandwich came out off the top of my head. But it's, it's, it's a few years older now. But that's what they based glass off of that version. Um, to, to actually have glass, you have some add-ons to customize um, the Android experience for Glass. It's not your traditional Android that you have. So people who have Android phones, you know, when they look at it, they come up, you know, they have a screen, it has icons with their apps on it. So you're basically what you call your launcher. Uh, you don't have that kind of internet, you don't have that kind of UI with Glass. So even though it's running Android underneath, it's a whole different uh, cover over the top of it for you to interact with. Um, and it doesn't run traditional Android apps like you'll find in the Google Play Store. So you can't just take an app off the Google Play Store and put it on your device and have it work because it's just a, it's a, it's a different beast. So um, and that it's important to understand that, especially uh, in a future talk, like I said, when we'll talk about development, you develop apps for Glass. It's, it's a bit of a different structure and organization than you'll find for a traditional Android app. So, um, so it's running Android, but it's not quite uh, 
not quite Android uh, as we all know it. But just to go through some of the geek uh, specs on this, um, the CPU, it's a, it's a TI OMAP 4430 system on a chip, 1.2 gigahertz dual core ARM V7 processor, very exciting stuff. Uh, the display is a 640 by 360 pixel uh, display, and this is actually it right here, this little prism that I uh, that sticks out just above your eye. So when I lift up, you, I don't know if you can see, there's a little display in there. It doesn't stand very long, about maybe five seconds or so. That's the display. So it's just the, it just sort of projects onto the prism, and you, you can only see it. Well, you see the full view when it's actually up to your eye like this. If you pull it back, it starts to vanish. You really can't see what's going on there. Uh, and I think it ends up, uh, it's the equivalent of a 25-inch display at eight feet away. That's supposed to be the sort of size it takes up here. I think I got that right. Something, something like that. Um, memory is possibly one gig. It's not officially documented. It looks like from people who have done some research, about 682 megabytes available uh, for usage. So not a high memory device. Most phones have two gigabytes on them now, but one gig is still fairly respectable. Um, it has 16 gigabytes of storage. There's 12 available. I think mine right now, if I take a look at it, has, uh, what do we have? I think it's about 11.8 uh, gigabytes free. I might have uh, a few pictures on here, but that's about it. So quite a bit of usable space on there. Um, since it's not a traditional Android device, you have different ways of interacting with it. So instead of having a, a virtual screen that you can interact with and touch, you've got, you've got different input methods. You've got a microphone and voice recognition. That's probably one of the most powerful ways that you can interact with glass. Uh, Google's really done a great job with their voice recognition, and it's, it's, it's pretty incredible, actually. So I think it's gotten to the point now where you can actually rely on that to be an input method. So that's one of the main ways you interact. There's also a touchpad. This, this whole side right here acts as a touchpad, so it's touch sensitive. It can recognize a single touch, multiple uh, fingers touching. Um, and it recognizes swipes in different directions that you're touching on the pad. So that's another, prime, another main way that you interact with glass. Uh, there's a camera, which is right up here in the uh, corner. It's a five, me five megapixel camera, and it can record 720p video, so it can do some high-def video. Yes? Does it react to you zooming in and out of the fingers, or no? Uh, the camera? Yeah, well, like, does it, like, just a touch interface, does it allow you to do, like, fly of you opening and closing your fingers, or, like, zoom Um, that's an excellent question. There is, a, it can recognize gestures. Um, I don't know about that actually. I have to take on, a look. The, sure. on the web browser, you can zoom in, but it's not like you don't do. If I remember correctly, it's not the normal okay. gestures that America's used to. Yeah, but maybe slightly different. Uh, but but it has a lot of at least with some of the tap gestures and the and the sliding and, and flings, for example, it can recognize those. Um, another way you can interface with it is through the MyGlass Android app. So uh, this thing pretty much stays tethered to my phone. I think it's, it's tethered right now. Um, and so there's a nice little app that you can use with this that allows you to basically configure it initially for Wi-Fi, uh, be able to uh, accept contacts with it. It's all be hidden down here. Here we go. Start screencasting. And it allows you to screencast. So when I come up here, you can see that's what I'm seeing on the screen here. I'm going to have plenty of screenshots here, so don't feel cheated that I'm looking at stuff and you're not seeing it. You will see plenty of this presentation. Uh, and you can also access uh, your glass through the web interface. So the sensors that it has aboard to be able to um, you recognize movement things, you have an accelerometer, you have a gyroscope, you have a magnetometer, so it's a compass, essentially, and it can uh, a proximity and ambient light detector. Um, so, having a gyroscope gives you the ability, I don't know if I have that installed on here, but I can try to demo it. There's an actual game that uh, I think, I think it's Glue. Is it Glue Mobile that made that, or is it? Uh, there, there, there's a word game that, that uh, a game uh, a producer made uh, that you basically, the way you, you choose these letters, like a sort of a jumble type game. And to choose the letter, since you can't touch the screen, you move your head to get this sort of little bubble over the letter. And once you hold it there for a little bit, that selects it. So you, if someone's playing the game, their head's going to look like this the whole time, which is kind of odd if you're on the subway and you know, you're just, there's someone here just doing this. It's like, no, they're not having a seizure. They're actually playing a game. So um, 
And then as far as network connectivity, uh, it has Wi-Fi in it. It only does 2.4 gig. I, I don't know if that's a, a really big deal. I know in, uh, in my apartment, I, have, I use 5 gig primarily because I have a lot of people around me, so it gets a little congested. But uh, it's really not necessary. You just need a basic connection for what this can do. And it's also Bluetooth uh, 4.0. It's um, Bluetooth Low Energy capable. I don't know. I don't think Ice Cream Sandwich, the Ice Cream Sandwich version of Android supports that, but it has the capability to at some future date, uh, is my understanding. And as far as sound, so there's no speakers on this, but there's a bone conducting transducer. It's actually, if I take this off, it's right behind here, so it rests right above your ear. Same kind of technology that they use in Jawbone uh, Bluetooth headsets. And you can actually hear pretty well out of it, so can your neighbors. Yes? Didn't that get updated with the new Opera update? There, as far as the different sound options available, or? Uh, no, there's like a new, completely new Google Glass that they're giving out when you turn yours in, they give you another one with an actual speaker. Oh, oh, well, okay. So, I don't know if we ever checked to see, did yours actually work with the, when we tried my ear, but did that work with your glass? Or, yeah, that's right, yeah, more than so they actually have support for sound through the USB ports. That's the next uh, option there. So with this version, so I have that second gen version of Glass, and that it came with a mono earbud that uh, goes into your right ear. And they actually just came out with the stereo earbuds, which I ordered, and they're really awkward and clumsy, but they work, and you can hear sound on it. You can play do Google Play Music through it and listen to stuff. Yeah, uh, those right there, as a matter of fact. Well, don't ever throw stuff to me. <laughs> <laughs> not guaranteed. Good thing it's not breakable uh, easily. So this is what it looks like. You have a little short piece here that goes into your right ear, and then you have a longer piece that goes around the back of your neck into your ear like that. So. Or for me, it goes under the ear. Oh, yes. Uh, people are along the lines of the tech specs. In the beginning, you said that there's a TI processor in mm -hmm. there. Well, TI stopped making smartphone chips, so are they going to continue to update that particular processor? Oh, wait, I'm not sure about that, actually. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'll be very honest with you. These specs came off the Wikipedia page. So. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. so I, I don't know. I don't know the spe specifics with that. So some people are curious. I, I think it was just interesting uh, just to find out like the speed of the processor that was a dual core. I think that's like, I honestly don't know about uh, anything specific with TI. but. Good to know that. So how did they come up with this logo? This is the logo for glass. So you look at it and say, what that A looks a little funny there. Any ideas why it looks like that? Yes? Because it uses a prism. Exactly. And it's funny because I use <laughs> because I use glass I, for a while. I mean, I, I don't know how quickly you found that out, but I saw someone post. I didn't find it out until that person posted that photo. Like, yeah, there was something about about. A week ago, maybe. Yeah, a week or two ago, sometime around Thanksgiving, and someone posted. They say they said, "Boy, I feel real stupid, but I have no idea this is what you know. This is that's what that letter meant was like that." And I think about seventy people responded and said, "Boy, we didn't know either. we had this like, for six months." So I just thought that was kind of interesting to see. It. That's where the uh, that's where that comes from. So it's, that that symbol becomes a lot more significant uh, when you see that. So so let's get into some fun stuff here. So we've got the glass user interface. The main part, the main thing that the glass user interface is centered around is what they call the timeline. So whereas on your Android phone, when you turn it on, you have a screen that has all your apps. You can slide back, you know, swipe back and forth between different screens where you might have widgets or so. You can go and then hit a button and have all your apps come up and swipe through those and potentially widgets and things like that. <laughs> Instead of having a launcher like that, you have a timeline. So it's the root level of the user interface, like I said, similar to a launcher in Android. And it's comprised of 640 by 360 pixel cards. So cards are a big concept with, with, um, with Glass. You'll, you'll hear a lot more about those as we go along. Um, you navigate through cards in the timeline, at least horizontally, at, the, at this root level. You can go down to hierarchies, but you're going to be mainly going backwards and forwards. So you, your history flows from right to left. So the past is all the way, I think from your perspective, on the far right side. And then as you get closer to the current present time, uh, you'll see you'll get more recent, more recent events. And then after that, you'll have your present sort of like ongoing actions and then future things will be to the far left. And actually have a little slide here to demonstrate. So it kind of looks like this. So when you start, uh, whenever you activate class, you end up at the screen right here. So if you swipe to, if you swipe and go to the right of that, those are your most recent paths, and then more distant paths, more distant paths to as far back as the device has cards available for you. And then likewise, going this way, it will take you to uh, your current ongoing activities or present acti activities, 
anything in the future, and then the very far end of that are your settings. So, again, this is the starting point of interaction with glass. Uh, the divider between the past and the uh, present future sections. There's an enlarged version of it. It's pretty exciting. A lot going on here. Got your time, and then this OK glass stuff that's that's there in quotes. Um, and I, I'll, I'll get more into the home screen. We have some more cards available on this in a bit. Uh, so the settings they allow glass to be configured, and they contain status information about glass. And like I said, always located on the very far left of the timeline. So. That is what you're going to see when you go all the way to the left. It'll show you if, if the current state of your battery and what you're using for data. So if you're not connected to anything, it'll say, you know, not connected. Otherwise, it'll say Bluetooth data or Wi-Fi data, which is what it was when I was uh, taking the screenshots here. Some examples of setting cards. You have your network, Bluetooth settings, information about your device, uh, the head wake-up angle. How you'll actually turn on. So I don't know if you've like if you've seen people with glasses, see them kind of nod up like that a little bit. That's when you because it has um, an accelerometer, it can tell when you've moved up, and also the gyroscope, it can tell when you've moved up a certain angle, and that will actually activate the device. So if you can touch it, you can just you can just put your head up and. I didn't see that. It's amazing either. <laughs> so. Would you like another one? So then there's some more things here. Um, I think this has all of the actual setting cards except for the guest mode, which is a, which would be far over here. But basically, the way you interact when you get over to this um, to the setting screen by swiping, you just tap and then you swipe forward, and that will take you through all of the different cards that are here. Uh, so network, Bluetooth, device info, head wake up, on head detection. So that'll actually um, it won't turn on like if it's moving around. It won't actually turn on unless it can detect that it's on your head and you, it's something you can calibrate by actually putting it on and it knows it, it by that way you can tell that you've actually put it on your head. Uh, you can adjust the volume that way and then there's a guest mode if you want to give it to people, you want to demo it and you don't want them to steal your personal stuff, then it's um, then they can go and they can just see some basic default cars that are available. So. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Oh, is it a little chilly? It is a little chilly. Turn on the air I think they just turned it on and it hasn't oh. got the heat out yet. Yeah. It's just blowing yeah, the cold just, air that's up there. It just doesn't it's just up oh, so, okay. All right. I was so caught up in the moment I didn't even notice it got really cold in here. Um, <laughs> so, so one thing also too, uh, I'll use this, this uh, flow as an example here. So to navigate down into a hierarchy of cards, so you start at this root level up here at settings. Uh, to navigate down, you'll tap right here on, on the uh, touch pad, and that is basically selecting an item. So instead of like tapping the actual item like you would on the screen, you're going to just tap on the touch pad. That'll navigate down. And to go sort of horizontally, you just you, you swipe you know, forward and backwards on the uh, touch pad. And then to go back, to go back up or just back in general, where you would have the back button in Android, you swipe down. And so, just and sometimes it's a little tricky if you don't if you get it kind of at a funny angle, it may not work right. But usually it's pretty good. You just swipe down, and that takes you back up to the previous card that you work on. So the present and future sections. So it's a static and live updating content. Uh, it can be comprised of text, HTML, photos, or videos. Um, it can also be your traditional Android UI widgets. So if you're an Android developer, things like a text view. Um, things like a different layouts. I don't remember all of them right now. So you can have a custom user interface. You can actually draw your own screen if you want to really get down on that level. And for some of the more advanced applications, you're going to need to do that. Uh, like that game that I was talking about where you're moving your head around all over the place to try to select letters. That's a custom user interface. Uh, and these cards are always to the left of the home card. Some examples of some things that you'll uh, see, and I think most of these are actually uh, from the Google Now app that you can install uh, to use uh, for Glass. Um, you have stocks, uh, sports, weather, directions. Uh, I think if I look at mine right now, it's weather. I have calendar items. Uh, I also have uh, pilot pizzas on here. I'll, uh, I, I can at some point here too, I'm happy to let people try this on after we're done, or I can actually uh, screencast what I'm seeing up to the computer here, and I can get some demos. Uh, afterwards, uh, after we go through these. Um, 
and some of the examples like I said. Uh, again, with the flow, you start the home uh, card and then you swipe backwards and that'll take you through all the different cards until you get to settings. So in the past, you have static content, and that just contains text, HTML, say same thing, text, HTML, photos, and videos. It's always to the right of the home card. Some examples, things, uh, this is my favorite demo one. I probably use this with you guys when I like to, 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 to show that I was, what is the weather forecast in Pick City that I'm currently in is what I should do. So what is the weather forecast uh, for Chicago? Um, there's an email message there that I received, uh, directions to a coffee house that I went to, and then a picture out the window. I live right next to 294. Not pretty, by the way. Don't ever live next to a, a six-lane, 12-lane freeway. Um, so some, some different examples, some different kind of content uh, that you can get. So you can see um, there's not a whole lot exciting that you can do with this content. You've got you know, basically an image, uh, images here with text on the side. You'll always see that the actual time when that card was put in your timeline is always given there. So you can know how long that that's been around for you when that event happened. And so here's the flow. Here's some more examples of different cards you can have. So when you swipe forward from home, you've got like a picture. You can do, they, it'll show you things like SMSs, emails, directions, phone calls that you've received or made. Uh, Twitter posts, uh, when you install these applications, which by the way, I should have mentioned this, they call them glassware. They don't really call them apps, glass apps. They're called more glassware, whether it's done through, um, whether it's a web-based kind of uh, glassware, which is a lot what Dan has worked on, or if it's something involved with the Google, with the Glass Developer Kit, the GDK, it's also called glassware. So whenever you install glassware, it'll give you a little card to show you, hey, welcome, here's the glassware, it's on your device. Uh, music, let's see, you saw search before, places that you're at right now, and then just it's another search, but they threw a graphic in there because it recognized Willis Tower, said, oh, I've got a graphic of that, they just put it right in there with the text. Kind of a nice touch. So navigation of the timeline. Um, so we have, uh, I think I've actually gone through some of this, so, at the top level, like I said, you, you, you swipe the touchpad forwards and backwards to go. When you're navigating down, not all of the cards that you see are going to have navigation. Some of them, they just show content and that's, that's all there is. But some of them you can, you can drill down into a little bit more. Um, and when, you, when you're navigating down, some of the kinds of things you're going to see are menus, pages, bundles, and an activity. Uh, I'm going to go through these in, in the next few slides here. And then navigating back up, you swipe down on the touchpad like we talked about before. So menus. Menus are lists of scrollable options. Uh, and they're a little bit interesting. They actually overlay the current card that you're looking at. So it's, a, it's just a transparency. So you can still see your content underneath, but you'll see the menu options and you can swipe through as many as you have uh, to, get to, uh, to get to whatever option you want. Um, you can only interact with the menu using the touchpad. So you'll see when we actually get to, uh, I'll show you the home card and some more examples of that where you can actually use your head to view all the different items that are available. You can't do that with a menu. You have to use the touchpad to interact with that. Uh, and again, horizontal swipes, uh, navigate between the options, tapping an item selects it, and it may perform an action or it may display another card uh, depending on how the glassware is written. So the menu flow, uh, the example that we had was a phone call that I received. Uh, if you tap on it, it brings the menu. You can see the transparency here. So you can still see this card underneath, uh, and then you see the options above. Menu options are going to have an icon associated with it, and then some text. And I, I think the icon is 50 by 50 pixels, if I remember correctly. Does that sound right? Yep. And so like I said before, you tap on that, swipe forwards, backwards, and then you swipe down to go back. So pages, pages are groups of related content that are larger than the size of a single card. So things like email, for example, when you get an email message, uh, it could be who knows how long, it could be just a short few words, or it could be paragraphs and paragraphs. Having pages allows you to be able to scroll through all of that content and see it. So, um, you can scroll for as many cards as needed, and there's a little scroll indicator to show the location, uh, the current location in the set of pages that you're in. 
So an example like that is this email I received from uh, Google Glass Support, which they're really great, by the way, for helping out once you get Glass. So I started out with this uh, message here. I said I wanted to see a little bit more of what was uh, in there. I tapped on the menu. A menu item came up and said read more. I tapped on it again, and then here's my entire message. You can see the scroll indicator. I didn't quite capture it in all of these screenshots, but one would have been here at the edge. You see that's progressing along, and there's one here, there would be one here at the far right. It stays up for maybe about a second or so, and then it, it uh, disappears. So that's the way you get large amounts of content uh, into the, related with one card as you use pages. Bundles. So bundles are a way to group uh, similar but distinct cards. So not where you have content that overflows one card, but you have different cards that are related, like you know, you've got some tweets from one person, maybe three or four tweets. Those things will be aggregated into one root card that's part of a bundle, and you can tap on that and see the individual tweets that are below. So the individual cards they may contain are uh, the individual uh, cards in a bundle may contain additional card hierarchy. So once you go into a card, there may be the menu options for those individual cards in the bundle, uh, or it may navigate down to something more. Um, and a bundle is indicated by a dog-eared fold in the upper right corner of a card. You may have seen some of these on here uh, in some of the other examples. There's a little dog ear up there that indicates that it's a bundle. So you know that when you tap on that, there's going to be more cards that you're going to scroll through there. So with stocks, for example, you tap and then you can see the, um, the uh, a more enlarged version of the uh, of the actual stock quotes and maybe some a little bit more additional information. Not a whole lot more. You can just see what the stock exchange it was on. I'm actually I mean, and here I actually captured the scroll indicators you can see there, there, and there how they uh, how they go along. Um, I'm actually glad this came out. I was concerned when I, I tried uh, viewing this presentation on a 32 uh, 37 inch TV with a Chromecast actually shooting it to the TV. You couldn't read any of these cards, so I'm glad on this big TV they actually show up okay. Good. And the final option available for you is an activity. This is going to be a, a GDK implementation. Um, this is something you would do if you're going to use the GDK. You'd actually make activities. So it's a container to, for custom user interface components. Um, it's used to create live cards and immersions. We're going to talk about those uh, in a minute. And this allows for you to integrate native Android functionality into your glassware. So you have a lot of flexibility when you do this, but it's a lot more work to get these working properly. So the example I use here is the Compass. This is actually a sample app that's available from Google. There's, I think, three or four samples. There's a Compass start, uh, stopwatch. Blanking on the other ones right now. I'm sorry. Timer. There's a timer, and I think there's a fourth one, but they're Oh, yeah, there's like a sound wave type thing, I think. Uh, that was an older one, but yeah, I, I, but that still counts as well. So this is the compass. So in here, uh, I'm at the home menu. Uh, I tap. It shows me a bunch of menu options. One of them is show compass. I tap on that, and then I have this compass. And I can go and move around, and the compass moves around too. It drains the battery really fast also, so I try not to use it too, too much. Um, And all of this too. This is all custom. This is all a custom user interface. I'll get a little bit more into what happens with this kind of thing. This is. Uh, uh, I don't even think they're using standard Android widgets for this. I don't recall. I looked through the code a little bit, but this is not. Um, they have to do some custom drawing to get that to work properly. So types of cards that you can have. Back to the home card again. Uh, so like I said, starting point of interaction with glass displays the current time and it's activated by tapping the touchpad or tilting the head to a 30 degree angle. And I should also mention the angle, you can adjust that. You can make it maybe 10 degrees or 15 degrees, but if you do that, it's going to be coming on an awful lot. If you do 30 degrees, it, it requires you to have very deliberate head movement to turn on glass. But you can tilt it to many different angles. So I think it's up to like 45 degrees or something, I think. I don't know, maybe that's just how far yeah. back my message. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not 90 because you'd have to go you know, way like this and back up. That would be very, very, it's already awkward to have to put your head up. That would be very, very awkward. Um, I think we've seen this one before, so we know what that is. Um, the home card option. So this contains options for interacting with immersions, which are non-timeline cards. Um, so some of the things that you're going to interact with here 
they, they don't sh so, some of them, uh, well actually if you're going to make an immersion, this is where you're going to access it from. It's not something that'll ever appear on your timeline. Um, they, the home card option can be activated by two methods. You can either use voice commands uh, or you can uh, tap or use touch to tap the touchpad to, uh, to drill down. So the first one with voice, um, and I'm gonna do a demo with this here. So I was lucky enough I threw a long uh, USB cord into my bag. So hopefully we can do this without ripping the glass off my head in the process. So you'll, you'll so when the screen comes up, it's gonna do a bunch of stuff. I forgot that picture, that's a picture of my living room. Um, to, uh, once you have the display up, you can actually at that point go and say, okay glass, and it'll then bring up the menu options. Those are anything to the right here. You just say this phrase and that's how you select the item. Uh, and as you tilt your head, it adjusts the menu. And I tried to give a sense of it in, in these slides, but I think it's way more fun to actually take a look at it in action. So let me step aside from the presentation here. Let me see if this is gonna work. All right, I want to zoom in the display to 100%. So you have to make sure you provide to them the uh, appropriate places. So um, this is just to show the, how how those um, how these items uh, compare one to one. So live cards, live cards are persistent content, and they live in the present and future sections of the timeline. Uh, there's two kinds of live cards. There's uh, one kind called a low. There's a low frequency update updating live card and a high frequency updating live card. So a low frequency update card is one that it updates it updates maybe every few seconds, but it's not constantly updating. So you know when you have an app, a regular app that you're interacting with and you're typing on the screen doing things, that display can potentially be refreshing up to 60 times a second uh, to make it, and, and the faster that it re the screen refreshes or updates, the more, the more sort of real feel that you have with it. It doesn't look as choppy. Um, it's not a choppy of an experience. 
Uh, so low frequency, if there's certain things, like if you're just displaying a weather forecast, something that's not going to change very often, then a low frequency update would make sense. So a lot of the cards that where you have the stocks, weather, game scores, those are low frequency updates. They, they, just, they don't update very often. So uh, there's actually a significance to that. I'll tell you about this after I describe high frequency updates. Um, where the content will update around 24 frames per second, 24 times uh, a second. And I'm guessing that's probably because that's how fast the projector works inside of here for the display. It may not go faster than that. So I'm going to guess that's why they set the limit at that point. Um, to do high frequency updates, actually, well, this, this explains it a lot. Um, if you do, I'll, I'll step back. If you're doing low frequency updates, you can use a subset of standard Android UI widgets, things like text views. Uh, they're all documented. Anything that works with what they call a remote view, um, which are used with actual Android widgets that you have. If you ever use widgets on an Android phone that you could have on uh, on on your screen, so uh, like you know, you have a weather forecast that pops up, or um, I have my security cameras uh, for my house in Ohio. I have them show up as widgets, so I have like a dashboard of those. Uh, the kind of things if you were developing for a widget for an Android phone. Uh, those, those, it's confusing because you have the widget that's, that the user sees, but then you have the actual widgets which are programming elements. The widgets that you use for programming elements for the widgets that a user is going to use, you can remember all that, uh, you, those same ones are what you can use for these low frequency updates. And they're documented on, uh, on the uh, Glass developer website. Uh, I have a link for that here in the slide deck. And high frequency updates, that requires custom UI code. You actually have to draw your user interface to the screen and have that update and tell it how it's supposed to update. So it's a little bit more complex, but then you can do just about anything that you want to do once you, once you have that, within reason with glass, whatever Glass can handle. And here's an example of a low frequency update live card. It's just the, the weather card. That doesn't update very often. It's just probably the standard uh, user interface for that. And the high frequency update is the compass example that, um, that uh, I showed earlier. So static cards, one of the other types, it's, 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 the, it's HTML, uh, text, photos, or videos, basic content. Uh, that lives primarily in the past section of the timeline. And currently, as of uh, the version they have for the uh, for Glass on here is called XE11, Explorer Edition 11. They usually update once a month. We're in version 11 now. As of this version, the only way to create static cards in the past section is to use the Mirror API, uh, which is the web-based version to have Glassware. <coughs> That's not good. Let's plug that in here. There are provisions for that. Uh, there are provisions for that. Uh, that are going to be available later, but it's not supported currently with the Glass Developer Kit. So it's there, you can actually write the code, it'll compile, and then it'll crash very quickly when you try to use it, as I found out. So, um, uh, But you can, uh, what, what I said here, uh, they can be created as part of a hierarchy card that's used in live cards. So you can have static cards as part of your live um, cards, but they're not going to be um, can't use the, the card mechanism at the root level. So let's see. Example of a static card. You just have basic content with the static cards. Uh, you can tell it, you know, here's an image, or put this image here on the left, here's text on the right. Um, and give it a, a timestamp as of yesterday. That's and so just basic content. That's most of what you'll see in the past part of the timeline. That wasn't actually yesterday, was it? No, that was not yesterday. Okay. okay. Because I think they're gone. I, you had to be very like happy there for a second. Oh no no no! No, they're in the city. There are some in the city, and there are some out here in the burbs. We can consult on that <laughs> afterwards because we're caribou fans, so we can definitely tell you where to, where to find them still. Um, Sorry, Starbucks people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have immersions. Um, immersions allow for some UI that are different from the live or static card. No, obviously, that's why it's a different category, and it, it creates the most custom glass UI experience. They don't live on the timeline anywhere, but you access them from the home card. So the one example that's here, and this is really a bad screenshot, it's just because I was taking it in my apartment and I didn't really want you guys to, to see everything in, that's in my apartment for you with that. Uh, this is an app called, a glassware called WordLens. And so it does live on the fly translation. Does anybody by any chance have anything in Spanish? You can use English. Well, you can do that too. Um, I'm going to 
gonna do a demo of this here and see what well, does anybody have any English that they can hand my way? Um, here. Okay, let me try this. Not another cut of model we've done before here. And you can see another word we got. There we go. Uh let me skip up here every time I plug this in, I have to go through the whole routine again to when I tried this out, I tried to translate Spanish into Spanish, and I wondered why it wasn't working. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the exact same letter. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, bring it up. It's just not cooperating for the, for the demo here. Okay. So. There we go. Okay, Glass. Okay, glass. Okay, glass. Honestly, it never has any problems like this. It's only because it's a presentation. So you have problem. That's right. Okay, glass. Translate this. You're going to have to change the language tab on the side. Oh, okay. Well, well you'd be solved. Whoa, it's finding a lot of words hidden there in the card. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. going on? This is this seriously. Probably it's because it's connected to PC, so it's gonna... Yeah, it connects all the time. It never seems to have any problems. I'm just gonna go through. Here's the other way I can interact with it here. Something else, oh, something else I want to show when I have this up here. You see, I don't know if you can see how everything got kind of smaller there. Yeah. When you fling the, um, when you fling on the touchpad when you have a lot of items, it actually will shrink things down. I'm gonna really do a quick demo of that. If I go fling like this. And you can see, something, you know, it's almost like, here we go. I think the calibration's wrong on this for the, um, for the uh, on head. But you can see how the display gets, so that's kind of a way if you wanna go through really quick and, you know, advance through to some different, um, you know, get way back in the cart, you can fling, and then it'll have a small, um, uh, it'll just make the cart smaller, but you can see more of them in the screen. I didn't have a slide of that, but that was actually, um, that was something else I wanted to show you. So let's try this again. We're gonna go here. I'm gonna go all the way back to translate. And I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up to English to Spanish. Let's try that. I get it in the grid, it finds it, it's gonna zoom in. Pretty good for a second there. I think I saw the, all the proper words uh, show up for a second. No, I'm holding it still in the color right now. There we go. Yeah. Anybody else? That's right. I think because it's like it sort of like it kind of figures out what the font is and like kind of figures out. It's yeah, I, 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 obviously I think there's a little bit more work that has to be done with it. We should be thankful that technology can even do that. It's pretty amazing. It's kind of like the first time I ever used a, a, a music tagging app, and I just thought well, there's actually a man inside this thing listening to the music, and I, I didn't even think that uh, they could do something like that. But then give it a little bit more time, we'll see. Uh, we'll see that working really well. But something like this is wonderful if you're in a neighborhood that has. Um, that has, like, say, a lot of Spanish in it. And, like, you, like I know if you go through um, some neighborhoods, there's a lot of signs that are in Spanish. I can't read a lot of that and know what it is. But this is a great way on the fly. It's like, you know, I wonder what kind of store that is. And you can look up and they can.